this is Rocky Mountain Edibles. Thanks for joining me. I'm really excited it's spring. Back behind me you can still see some of the remnants of a recent snowstorm. Today we're going to talk about how to identify wild onion in early spring. I will show you some other plants that can look similar to wild onion this early in spring. And hopefully you'll be able to better differentiate between the wild onion and some of the other plants that look very similar. You can see this hillside back behind me. Everything still looks quite dead, but on closer inspection you will find that actually there's a number of green things that are starting to emerge from the ground. So let's take a look, see what we can find here. When you're looking for wild onion at this type of year, you're looking for a certain color and also a certain profile to the um, plant shape as it begins to emerge from the ground. So right here I see something that looks similar to wild onion at this stage in development. This uh, particular plant actually has a bluish green hue to it and uh, that actually is very similar to the color of wild onion but on closer inspection we'll see that this is actually not wild onion. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of wild onion and grass. Many times in the early spring when I'm walking around looking for wild edibles I'll notice that, of course, many of the plants look very similar because they're just in the leaf stage. They haven't yet flowered. Here is a close-up of the bulb of wild onion after I just pulled it from the ground. You'll notice that in this particular case, there is a fibrous coating that surrounds the actual um, fleshy bulb. The wild onion here has two leaves coming from the bulb, and you always want to make sure you check for that characteristic onion smell. If it doesn't have the onion smell, it's not wild onion. It might very well be a poisonous plant. On closer inspection, you can see here with the wild grass that it really is quite different from the wild onion. So you'll notice that the leaves are different. You'll notice they're very flat in nature. You'll notice also that there's a lot of longitudinal lines running along the length of each leaf and also the grass stems themselves and that is not a characteristic of wild onion. Here is a close-up of one of the grass leaves. You can definitely see very distinctly those lines running longitudinally on one leaf. You'll notice that the leaf itself is very flat. The onion leaf is more round in shape. You'll also notice the characteristic U-shape to the inside of the leaf. And then this actually shows a uh, closer up image of the grass root. The grass root doesn't look anything like the bulb of the wild onion. I also wanted to remind you to do your own research. Please do not rely on any of my videos to do your research for you or to be your research. Please get reliable resources from experts in the field and make sure that you are 100% positive before you either use the plant for medicine or for food. There's going to be a plant challenge. So here it is. You can see this plant here. It's one of the very first to emerge in spring along the front range, and it's always one I get really excited about. This plant is filled with carbohydrates, so it has a lot of potential energy for the forager. And this was a plant that a lot of Native American tribes relied upon as a food source. So the challenge is for you to post in the comment section either the Latin name or the common name of whatever plant you think this might be. And if you are really curious about finding out what the actual identity of this plant is, I encourage you to subscribe to my Substack.